Hello everybody, my name is Ben Robbins from The Lost World of Movie Props. I'm here with Carolyn Monroe. How yes. are you doing today? Hello. Um, I'm doing, I'm very well, despite the heat. It's We're here hot. at Sussex Comic, Comic Con. Com yeah. We are Sussex, Sussex Comic, Comic Con. Con. Yeah. Yes, Caroline Monroe. Nice to see you. So have you had a busy day today? Has it been eventful? Um, it's been very eventful because yeah. I've met up with some wonderful friends. Awesome. Ken nice Foray, nice. Emily Booth. I mean, so many Star Wars people and... Yeah. Um, so I've actually had a lovely day. Yesterday was a little bit busier, yeah. but today's been very social. Nice, yeah. It's been <laughs> so a bit more intimate with the fans. Very though. intimate, yes. Had lots of time to chat with people, which has been Wonderful. great. So yeah. when did you first get into acting? Did you always want to be an actress growing up? I didn't know. I, no, I had no idea. This, my school closed down. Oh, really? And yeah. I was thinking when I was 16... My mum and I thought maybe I'd have something to do with fashion or mm. or window design or something. Yeah. But I I did a little bit of art and I went to Brighton Art College on a Saturday. Yeah. And um, there was an art student friend of mine yeah. who was taking studying photography. So he asked if he could take pictures and I said yes. So we did. Um, and he asked my mum if he could send the photos. They were having a a face of the year competition nice, judged yeah. by a photographer called David Bailey. You're too young I'm to too know, young, but yeah, you're yeah. too young. But David Bailey was iconic yeah. as a yes photographer in the 60s. Right. Um, so lo and behold, mum said, yes, you can use the picture. The picture was chosen by Bailey and I <laughs> I became the, sounds silly, but um, it was a newspaper called the Evening News, and I became the face of 1966, oh, wow. judged by David Bailey. So, so that set me off on the road. Yeah. Um, uh, and and I found my first job, which was very. I had an agent at the time, a, a modelling agent, Lucy Clayton, and my first job was to sit in the sea in Malta. We were yeah. flown to Malta and be photographed in these beautiful jumpers sitting in the sea by this wonderful photographer called Duffy, yeah. Brian Duffy. And it was for American Vogue. So, nice. so that was my first sort of foray into modeling. Yeah. And so the modeling was great. And I did it for many years, mm. including a campaign called Lamb's Navy Rum, yeah. which I did for 12 years. But in the meantime, I was acting and, and sort of studying and, and so I always say it was accidental, but yeah. accidental in the beginning, um, but it became my passion. Yeah. You know, I started out doing extra work in the original Casino Royale yeah. back in whenever it was made, 67, I think. Oh, wonderful, yeah. The, the spoof, casino, the spoof <laughs> uh, Bond film. And then, um, yeah, I seemed to work from there, which is wonderful. Yeah. And I learned, I didn't do the typical thing going to drama school. Um, which maybe I should have done, certainly for stage, but for for film, it's a different medium. Mm. So um, I, I learnt my a lot, a lot of my mistakes, good or bad or indifferent, on on camera. So yeah, of course. Um, th there you go. But yeah. that, that's I mean, how I started. I and mean, I know all about Vogue because my fiance has a big pile of Vogue catalogues and magazines oh, at home. So yeah. oh really? So, uh, to tell her that you were in Vogue. Yeah, that's, I was. That's a big deal, I man. was. Awesome. I was doing bridal dresses. Yeah. This was with Bailey. So these were bridal dresses which he shot yeah so when did uh, James Bond come into your life because I looked at your table and there's pictures of you in James Bond and James. tell us the story um well again I I, I through the modeling I mean I'd done quite a few uh, films at that point and um and I was still doing the Lamb's Navy Rum poster at the time yeah that was in 76 and Cubby Broccoli the producer I think he traveled we used to travel on the train and it was the posters they had apparently they had these big posters up of 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 myself with oh, the wow. nice, yeah. yeah with a wetsuit and a knife <laughs> and a looking rather tough at the time and um he he asked me to go into the office and yeah. uh meet him and and his producer um his director and which i did do um in the meantime he'd looked at some of my work so so he he'd looked at Gosh, I think I'd done, I had done both the Dracula films. I'd done the Golden Voyage of Sinbad yeah. and um, Captain Cronus. So, uh, and at the Earth's Core. So I think he, he, he could see my work and, yeah. and he offered me the part of Naomi. Yeah. Uh, 
I think within a week. So I was over the moon. <laughs> I couldn't believe it at first. Yeah, I thought, gosh, she's made a mistake. But yeah. yeah, so that's how I got involved in it. Yeah, because James Bond's such a big iconic name nowadays. So it, you've cemented yourself in history of James Bond. Well, I mean, a little tiny part in history. It's kind of legendary, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, is. it has a. It is pretty iconic, the Bond films. I mean, to think, to think, is this the 50th or the 60th year? I can't. They're, they're, they're celebrating this year, yeah. but it's, it is pretty amazing, really. So obviously, you got to do a lot of horror films. What was your, I did. What was your favourite kind of horror film? Favourite type to do, and what kind of death scenes did you get to perform oh, in gosh. those? Did you have a favourite death scene in any? <laughs> um, yeah, I do die quite a lot, don't <laughs> I? But I do survive as do well. Survive, yeah. Um, I, I would say, what was my favourite one to be involved with, or to? I mean, I suppose for me, uh, it possibly would be the the one that spurred me on to to study more about acting would be working with Christopher Lee in yeah. Dracula AD seventy two, because I I I um I was I got totally I I, I talked to him a lot beforehand and um, before. We did the scene, but we didn't discuss the scene. Yeah. And I actually asked the director, Alan Gibson, Canadian director. I said, I'd rather not, mm. it, personally, I'd rather not see Christopher until he comes out. Yeah. You know, so I, I do my bit of the scene beforehand. So I would, I hoped I would feel the way the character felt, Laura Bellows, when she sees Dracula for the first time. Yeah. And I, I, I hope that we achieved that, you know, between us. So yeah. I didn't see him before he came out. So when he came out onto the set, which was a deconsecrated church at Pinewood Studios that they recreated, um, I, I, I felt my reactions were real. So Because he looked terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> He's so tall. Christopher was so tall, six foot four. Oh, and wow, I was barefooted. Nice. And, and he had the red eyes and the whole demeanor about yeah. him was very menacing. Yeah. And, you know, an hour before we'd been chatting away about, I don't know, just mundane things. Yeah. And suddenly there he was. So, yeah, I, 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 that was the turning point for yeah. me is in it, realizing. Is it quite scary to see a cast member go from your friend into character playing a role like that? Does it give you a sense of fear inside from him? Or you still were like, no, no, it's just my friend, no right? it, it helps, it helps. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it was amazement to see him, the transformation mm. physically, yeah. you know, because then, then he was very quiet and still and, yeah. and, and he became that character and, and I felt very small and vulnerable. Yeah. You know, I, I did, and which was perfect, which was what I was hoping might happen for yeah. Laura Bellows, my character. And again, it happened with Joe Spinell later in, in, in Maniac. He again was an amazing actor to work with, extraordinary, really completely um, enveloped in his character, off-screen, gentle like a pussycat, super clever and funny, yeah. and yet on-screen, so menacing. So the, the change in, in their characters helps you as an actor, I think. You know, helps, because I, I, I'm a person that, I, I, maybe unlike, a lot of actors that that um, like to rehearse lots and lots. Yeah. I actually don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I I mean, obviously it depends on the director and the other actor you're of working course, with. Yeah. But I actually don't like to overthink it because then you're overthinking it, and and you're 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 prepared with your your reactions. Whereas I like to see what happens in a. Yeah in a more natural sense, because we're talking, of course, and yeah. we haven't talked before, no, no, but we're, we've only just we're just discussing, <laughs> exactly, yeah. so we're discussing, and that's the first time, and that's how I like, but that's how we talk in real life, so exactly, if yeah. you can kind of recreate that feeling for camera, which is tricky, because you've yeah. got all the lights, you've got the cameras, you've got all the crew around, and other actors, it, it's hard, but if you can kind of create that then it's a sort of it's a sort of a magical thing. It's it's great. Awesome, mm. wonderful. Well, thank you so much for talking today. Thank it was you, a ben. quick little talk, and I hope you didn't get too hot in here while I we were didn't. Here. Thank <laughs> thank you awesome. for listening, whoever's out there listening. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Ben. Well, thank Lovely question. Nice thank you. Lovely. Yeah.